It doesn't matter if you fall a million times. As long as you get up a million and one times. Everybody has a struggle. Everybody has a story. It's up to you to tell your own story. But this is my story. Well, who better to tell your story than yourself? Raw and uncut. Nothing added. Nothing taken away. Oskino. It isn't in cars and stuff like that. So I always had a little bit of money, you know what I'm saying? So they took us to, we ended up at uh, a, a house with all these other kids from foster care. I was there for about a month, you know what I mean? And I was like, yo, I, and even though at my grandma's house she didn't like me and, I, and it wasn't, I didn't feel like it was at my house, it, it was better than the foster home, you feel me? Because my neighborhood loved me, you know what I'm saying? So I said, I gotta get out of here, man. So I told my little sisters, we running tonight. So my sister Omira was like, no, I don't want to run. So my little sister Yaya was like, I'm going to go with you. I was like, well, you can't go with me if she don't go. So you got to stay here with her. Y'all keep, she can't, she can't be here by herself. So she like begging me to go, but I had to leave her. I left her. So I ran away. Mind you, I didn't even know where I was at. Because I only, only play, I only knew my neighborhood. I only knew from Broad and Lehigh to <laughs> Knife and Lehigh to about... I knew downtown, I knew Center City because we used to go down there and like breaking cars and stuff. Until about Germantown and Sheltonham is probably the farthest I've ever been in my life. So I, so I knew that little square. I mean, so I don't know where we was at. But anyway, I, I, I said, if I could figure out how to find Broad Street, I could find home. You know what I'm saying? So I ran away, jumped out the window. I only had three pair of pants. I, I would put up my three pair of pants I had because I'm like, I'm not leaving my three pair of pants. It's all I got. You know what I'm saying? So, and that's the three pair of pants I accumulated while I was there. So, I'm, I ran away and I was lost. And I started getting scared. I started getting scared because I'm like, I shouldn't have ran because I don't know where I'm at. So, I didn't, then I didn't know how to get back to where I ran from. So, I was like, so I found the McDonald's. And I was asking the guy, where's Broad Street? Like, the, the guy in the McDonald's kept saying, like, well, who you with? Me and mom and them at. I'm like, they in the car, lying. She's like, well, bro, he wrote down on the paper, like, how to get to Broad Street, but I just, really didn't understand it, so I just started walking, walking, then it turned nighttime, and I got scared, you know what I mean, because I was like, I'm lost, so I was got in the back of a pickup truck, like the, the uh, just to get rest, but I ended up falling asleep, and I woke up, it was cold, I woke up, even though it was summertime, I woke up, it was cold, I guess through the night, so now my nose running, so I get up, I see the kids going to school, so you know, I'm walking to school, like with them, so I'm asking people, where Broad Street at, where Broad Street? So I finally found Broad Street, man. I, I, it was like, for me finding Broad Street was like finding the promised land. You feel me? So I found Broad Street, and uh, I, I, I was going to jump on the, jump the L joint, but I was scared. You know I mean, I was like, man, I don't want to get got this far to Broad Street and then get locked up. You know what I mean? So I just walked. I think I was like on 66 and Broad. So I had to walk. I walked to Broad Lehigh. That was about, that's miles and miles and miles and miles and miles. I'm walking, walking, walking. But me knowing I, I knew which way, where I was going, I was going the right direction. I didn't care how far it was. You mean because I know I was going the right direction. So I didn't get to I, was, I didn't get to my neighborhood that to that night. So I was going. So it took me about two days, two days. I mean, and you know, I had like two dollars, so I had to stop at stores and got some potato chips and some juice and shit. Like I mean, so I get there. Mind you, I'm thinking because I didn't know that the why we got took or nothing like that at the time. So, you know, when I get to my, I think when I get to my grandma's house, they're they gonna be like, yo, hey, hey, how you been and all that? This is a total opposite, you know what I mean? So I knocked on the door, like, grandma, grandma. She got the window. Your father stabbed my daughter. Huh? So, in the midst of me being in foster care, me and my sisters and them, my mom and dad cracked out somewhere. My dad stabbed my mom to death inside some house. I mean, not the death, but tried to stab her to death. So, he stabbed her up. We didn't even know. If she'd have died, we wouldn't even would have known. You know what I mean? So, when I get there, my mom been in my grandma's house. I ain't seen her in a while. She, my mom wasn't even there when they took us. She wasn't even there. So, she didn't see me in a long time. So, when I came in there, I'm like, you know, what's, what's up? Like, I, I was really worried about it. I was a mama's boy bad. I loved my mom a lot, man. You know what I mean? That's why I was kind of hurt that she just didn't, you know what I mean? But anyway, um, she in there, in the room that I used to sleep in, she in there, she got her leg up on the chair. All these stitches in it and everything. So I asked him, well, what happened? You know, your dad stabbed me up and he tried to kill me. And so, wait, is he in jail? She's like, no, he ain't in jail. I don't know where he at. I mean, that's so, you know, I'm, I'm scared, whatever, whatever. I'm like, mind you, I'm nine years old. So, my brother right there, too. 
So I said, after me and my mom finished having small talk, my grandma's like, you gotta go. So I was like, y'all gotta go where? She's like, y'all, y'all leave. So I looked at my mom like to see if she's gonna tell her, say something like, yo, make, make me not have to leave. She just looked down on the floor, so I had to leave. So I mean, I was like, damn. But I had a homie named Chuck, Dwayne Glover, rest in peace. When that, when that, everything got bad, I go right to his house every time. Yup, every time. Hold up, give me a second. Give me a second. 